Have you ever heard someone say, I can't eat like I used to without getting fat, or I hardly eat anything anymore and I still gain weight? Losing weight over 50 has some unique challenges, especially if we haven't regularly exercised our whole lives. But now we're older and we want our health and bodies back. Losing body fat and not just weight is vital, as losing lean mass or muscle reduces our resting metabolic rate, which is how many calories we burn while we're asleep and not doing anything. Choosing the right exercises will bring our rate back up where it belongs. If our goal is to lose fat, we must be in a calorie deficit. Exercise helps with this by increasing our calorie demand, with the other side of the coin being nutrition. We need to monitor the quality and quantity of the foods we intake. Exercise for fat loss breaks into two categories, resistance training and aerobic exercise. Aerobic exercise breaks down further into steady state and hit cardio. Resistance training is effective for fat loss in two ways. First, it counteracts age-related muscle loss that reduces our daily calorie burn, increasing our resting metabolic rate. A study found after 24 weeks of strength training, both young and older men's resting metabolic rates increased by 9%. This establishes a solid foundation for a fat loss program. Not all resistance exercises are equal when it comes to maximizing our muscle growth and in turn, our ability to torch fat. We need to focus on compound movements. These build the most muscle in the long term and burn more calories while you perform them, providing an afterburn effect much like hit cardio. Compound movements like squats, deadlifts, bent over rows, bench press, lat pull downs, and shoulder press all work multiple muscle groups and can be easily progressed to keep you building muscle. Dumbbell and resistant band variations are great for those over 50 as they're easier on the joints. Resistance bands are the most joint friendly but are a little more challenging to track progress with. I have quite a few videos on the channel using bands, so I'll put a link in the playlist at the bottom of the top comments so you can check them out. The advantage of dumbbells is you can adjust an exercise to make it more joint friendly. For example, doing a neutral grip shoulder press instead of a traditional palms forward grip. I did a video demonstrating knee and back friendly dumbbell squat variations. Again, I'll put the link in the top comment. So many people focus on cardio for fat loss, but it should be viewed as an accessory to resistance training. To make fat loss permanent, adding calorie burning muscle to our frame should come first. This is confirmed by a study done in 2013 that compared various blends of resistance training and cardio, finding high intensity resistance training induced a faster visceral fat loss and thus the potential of resistance training should not be undervalued. The cardio we choose around this will be based on how well we're recovering from our weight training as well as our ability to stick with intense workouts. When we're pushing our limits with every training session we can get burned out. So I recommend starting easy and focusing on building the intensity of your resistance training first and keeping the cardio more moderate and enjoyable. Walking, swimming, and cycling are all aerobic exercises that are low impact, enjoyable, and relaxing. They can also be scaled as our fitness level improves. With walking, we can quicken our pace or find a hill or incline to go up. Another thing you can do is as you lose weight, add the equivalent amount of weight into a backpack and wear it during your walk. This is what they call rucking. It has a military background where soldiers train with full backpacks to carry weapons, food, and supplies long distances. Swimming and cycling can be advanced by increasing the pace or duration and are great candidates for HIIT training, which is high intensity interval training. This gives you a higher calorie burn in a shorter amount of time. There are many different ways you could perform these intervals. With cycling, you could ride as hard as you can for 30 seconds, then take it easy for 30 seconds to a minute before going hard again. Swimming, you could swim a lap as fast as you can, then have a leisurely swim back. To see how to put this all together in a successful training program, including resistance, cardio, and diet, watch this video next and keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.